purpose of this video is to describe how we use the safe SIDA system in our own endodontic practice. Since its initial development, the safe SIDA instrumentation system has undergone some modifications that have made it simpler and more effective. The system is virtually free of breakage, giving you, the dentist, a wide margin of safety and peace of mind, something akin to the holy grail that I am continuously in search of. It also gives you the ability to play with the system, perhaps customizing it to your own needs and making it even better for you. Prior to starting our shaping procedure, we must first establish access. This is most often done with a long shank number two or four high-speed surgical round burr. If you notice, the burr head plus the length of the tapered shank is seven millimeters long before the shank becomes parallel. Seven millimeters is the depth of penetration you want to make into the occlusal surface of all teeth, including molars, providing the occlusal surface has not been drastically worn down. As you can see in our presentation of the extracted bicuspid, a depth cut of seven millimeters allows us to penetrate deep enough to establish contact with the pulp chamber. Try it on molars. You will see that it works the same way. After establishing depth, it is fairly routine to remove the overlying roof of the pulp chamber with a series of circumferential upstrokes until the axial walls do not appear to have any major undercuts. Once access is obtained, we scout the length of the canal using either an 06 or 08 rima to get to length. In the mouth, we would be using the apex locator. When the apex locator tells us we are at the apex, it is really telling us that we are at the constriction. That point in the canal length where the diameter narrows before opening up to the wider apical foramen. To prevent the buildup of debris at the constriction, we instrument the canal through a 25 to 0 0.5 millimeters beyond the length of the constriction. When the same procedure is performed on an extracted tooth, we extend the length of the instrument until we see it just peeking out of the apical foramen. We will instrument to this length through a 25 after which we will pull back about one millimeter to what we believe is where the constriction is. Please note that we use the initial reamer or reamers with a tight watch winding motion that allows us to rapidly negotiate to length in most cases. Once the length has been established, we place a rubber stop on the number 10 reamer at the appropriate length and attach it to the reciprocating handpiece for rapid instrumentation to 0 0.5 millimeters beyond the constriction. We place the rubber stops at the same 0.5 millimeter extension on the numbers 15 and 20 safe siders. Please note how easily they negotiate the length. This ease of negotiation is a direct result of using relieved reamers rather than excessively engaging K files. After widening the canals to a 20 0.5 millimeters beyond the constriction, we use the tapered piezo to both widen and straighten the coronal portion of the canals. Ideally, I like to get within six millimeters of the constriction, but if significant resistance is met, I stop short of that length. I never attempt to get closer than six millimeters when using the relieved reamers. I lean the lateral cutting blades of the tapered piezo against the outer walls of the canal on the upstroke in an attempt to straighten any curves that may be present. I run the piezo at approximately 1,000 RPM. This is in contrast to the 3,000 to 4,000 oscillating cycles used in the reciprocating handpiece. After shaping coronally with the tapered piezo, I check to make sure I am unobstructed to full length taking the number 20 relieved reamer 0.5 millimeters beyond the constriction. With patency established, I take the number 25 safe cider in the reciprocating handpiece to 0.5 millimeters beyond the constriction. Of course, irrigants are being used continuously during this entire shaping procedure. Please again note how easily the relieved reamers negotiate to length. This is because they have half the number of flutes of a K-file, and the orientation of their flutes is twice as vertical, making them far better at removing dentin when a watch winding or engine driven reciprocating motion is used. Less engagement, superior cutting, and greater flexibility leads to not only easier apical negotiation, but a far superior tactile sense of what the tip of the instrument is encountering. Once I advance to the 30 and 35 safe siders, I pull back one millimeter when working on extracted teeth and 0.5 millimeters when working on teeth where the measurement was gained with the apex locator.
The optional 3004 NITAR relieve reamer is a transition instrument used between the 3002 and the 3502 relieved stainless steel reamers. Although I don't find a real need to check for patency with the 25 relieved reamer after using the 30 and 35 one millimeter short, a video of this nature should at least make you aware of the possibilities of using it to assure the maintenance of patency. I subsequently pulled back an additional one millimeter and shaped the canals to a 40. My last instrument is often a 2506 that creates a smooth continuous taper between the middle and apical thirds of the canal. It is taken to the original 0.5 millimeter extension beyond the constriction. The canal is now ready to be fitted with a medium point from EDS. The optional 2508 is only used in wide canals never closer than within 2 millimeters of the apex and never around an abrupt curve. Please note the tug back fit of the points during trial seating and after they have been cemented into place.